In this how-to video, I will show you how to use the tracking template that accompanies Appendix A of Lighting Software. While Lighting Software is all about system design and project design, which is the activities happening in the front end of the project owned by the architect, Appendix A also goes into how to track the project. This is something that the project manager should actually do. Appendix A proposes using earned value as a way of tracking both progress and effort. And the appendix comes with a comprehensive template for doing just that. The idea behind earned value tracking, you can always plot the planned progress and the planned effort of the project. You can see in the diagram it's the blue line. But when reality happens, you're going to get different progress and different effort. Those you can actually track separately, and you can see it in the green line and the red line. If you have enough data, and enough can be even four, five, six uh, points, you can project it forward and see where this project is heading. For example, in this kind of a projection, you can see this project is not going to finish on point one or two in time. It would finish on point three when the projected progress will reach 100%. And you can also, at the same time, find point five, which is a projected cost overrun of the project. Since all you need is maybe four, five, six points, a month, a month and a half into a year's project, you see exactly where this project is heading, and that gives you ability of taking corrective action early and often when they have the most chance of actually succeeding. The appendix offers a template called the tracking template, and there's a sample project uh, next to it. Let's examine the sample project first. It's a very simple project, has about 18 activities, there's some dependencies, effort estimation, and so on. In the template itself, there's an activity tab where you list not just the activity as, as a whole, but also you break it down into the individual life cycle. Now, various activities can have various life cycles. For example, testing activities are very different than construction activities as far as their life cycle. But you can literally have for every service some requirements, some testing, some design, and so on. You then need to estimate for each one of these activities the effort involved and the weight of each phase. Now what the spreadsheet would actually do here, it would calculate the total uh, weight with respect, with the weight of each phase with respect to the whole. For example, right now, they're all 20 percent, but if I bump this up, say, to 8, then this one is 40 percent and the rest are 15 percent. It doesn't really matter as long as it ends up at 100 percent. You're the one that gives weight for the various activities in the project. So the first thing you do is you go and itemize it this way. And it's very important to actually do it this way because by breaking it down to the internal phases, that gives you the option of having binary exit criteria for each phase. Is it done or is it not done? And the weight here gives you how much of that activity do you actually complete. So the first thing you do is you list all of your activities. And you can also copy from Microsoft Project the planned completion date for each one of those activities. The spreadsheet will calculate for you the planned earned value. So what I'm highlighting now is actually the blue line, the shallow S-curve of the project. And again, you only enter the activities once in the project. And so everything is fed off from this list over here. On the right, we see tracking. They are spaced a week apart, and on a weekly basis, you get to say for each phase, is it done, is it not done? And so if this phase is done, you put one. If it's not done, it's zero. In fact, the spreadsheet will insist on having binary criteria. If I try and put three here, the spreadsheet would actually reject it. No, it needs to be zero or one. Much the same way, you get to track effort. Somebody came to work, they worked on something for five days, you record five. Now, it doesn't matter if they didn't actually finish it. For example, they may work five days, somebody worked five days here and five days over here. The fact that they didn't finish it is irrelevant. You have to account for the effort involved. And so, on a week-by-week -week basis, you get to look at each phase and say done, not done, and how much effort was spent. You also get to control as a validation rule how many resources are allowed per task, meaning should you have two developers working on a service, and also a tracking resolution, meaning do you track every seven days, every 10 days, and so on. And the tracking resolution, of course, would change the spacing of those dates over here. 
Once you put the zero and one, zero and one, and the effort spent, the spreadsheet does the rest. First, it would calculate for you the progress up to each point in time. This is the green line. And also the effort up to each point in time. And again, all you do is you put the zeros and one and the amount of effort spent and the spreadsheet will calculate the rest. Here's the plot of the plan, the progress and the effort. And the spreadsheet would also do for you the extrapolation so you get to see when the project is going to finish and how much it's actually going to cost you. And then you can also do what ifs and put corrective action and see what effect they have and so on. For more on project design and tracking, see writing software.